All right, here's an example of a generic multiple integral. So a, uh, a multiple integral over a generic reason, I should say. So we got this function, z equals 5y, dA, again, that just means we get to determine the order of integration we want to use, over the region that's bounded by these values for y. So what I always do when I see a problem like this is I always start off by graphing the region with Desmos. So my regions are... Um, y equals 3x squared and the other one is y equals 2 plus x squared all right and if I go in here and zoom in on this you can see our region goes from negative 1 to positive 1 for the x's okay so between negative 1 and positive 1 the red curve is always below the blue curve and if I go be out, outside that region, the red curve is, is uh, always above it, and it never gets, never reverses. So those are unbounded if I go beyond that region. So this is the bounded region that we're talking about. And within this region, if, if I'm moving left to right, x is negative 1 to positive 1, the blue is always above the red. But notice what happens if I try to switch it and, and go from 0 to 3 in the, in the y direction. So from 0 to 3, left to right, I'm hitting the red curve on the left and the red curve on the right. But then when I get up here to 2, I hit the red curve on the right, then the blue curve. And then on the right side, I hit the blue curve, then the red curve. So what that means is if I were to try to set this up, with y on the outside, meaning the y values are, are changing from the lowest point uh, of the bounded region to the highest value of y in the bounded region, I would have to set up multiple integrals because what I'm getting, um, what the x coordinates are for these values of y changes. I'm getting just red uh, left to right here, but then I'm getting red and blue, and I'm getting this space in the middle that's not used, and then it's picked up again so that would be a much more involved integral if I made y my outer limit of integration if I made x my outer limit of integration negative 1 to 1 again I have the same pattern all the way through blue above red below so the thing I'm going to set up is I'm going to let my I'm going to let my outer limits integration always be the thing that that makes the integration the easiest to do. So making x be the constants, negative 1 to 1, always keeps the same uh, pattern, blue above, red below. So I'm going to make, and in, in, in Desmos you just type i and t for an, an integral, I'm going to make uh, the x's go between negative 1 and 1, and when I allow x to range between that, I'm going to type i and t again, the y's always have the red on the bottom and the blue on the top. So the red, 3x squared, is always on the bottom, and the blue, 2 plus x squared, is always on the top. All right, and then our, our function to find the volume under was 5y. So if I type 5y, that is, um, that's our function to find the volume under. That's our f of xy, if you will, in the notation. And then we have to give it the order like da doesn't work here okay, you have to specify so these are y's so i'm going to use dy and then these are x's so i'll use dx and it gives us an approximation okay and if you look this is i'm going to show this work in just a second but 56 thirds is the answer and that's what that um is that's our our value uh, but this is the volume underneath the surface with that, uh, with those limits integration. All right, and here is a little visual of what we just found. So this is those two regions in the xy plane. Let me color coordinate them for you. So that was the blue that we saw before above the red, and this is you know where the red hits that surface 5y, and that's where the blue hits the surface 5y. And so what we found is basically the volume underneath this shape down to that shape in the plane.
That's what we've just found is that volume. All right, and now let's talk about how to do it mathematically, and that's what we'll do in the next video is how to actually find one of these by hand.